What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today is Tuesday, March 24th. Before we jump into the markets, Trade Hacker question of the day. When applied volatility is high across all symbols, how do you decide what to trade? That's a good question. So let me talk about it from this perspective. I mean, if you look at any of these stocks, you look at Apple, I mean, the IV percentile is at 96, IV rank of 59. I mean, all these big stocks, Amazon, you know, IV percentile of 96, IV rank of 63. I mean, just, you know, across the board, everything has high implied volatility. So the question is, how do I decide which symbols to trade? And the way that we look at it is, when you're in a situation like this where implied volatility is high across the board, we tend to navigate towards broad markets first. So indices, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell, so IWM, DIA, QQQ, SPY, and then you know even some of these international indices or smaller ETFs or sector ETFs. International is like EWZ, EWW, which is Brazil and Mexico. And then we look at the financials, XLF, XRT for retail, IYR for real estate, FXIs, China's large cap. So we, we tend to navigate towards ETFs first. And the reason is, is because when you're in a situation like this, there is more risk trading a single stock. I mean, take, for example, Delta Airlines. Now, I don't think that any of the airlines are going to go out of business over this coronavirus situation, but they certainly could, right? It's an individual company. And if they, if they do some things and if the government doesn't bail them out and, 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 you know, there is situations where publicly traded S&P 500 type companies can go bankrupt, right? They can go to zero. And so you do have a little bit of additional risk with stocks. You do have more volatility typically with an individual stock versus an ETF. And so we tend to like to stick in time in periods of extreme high implied volatility. We stick to mostly broad-based ETFs, sector ETFs, country ETFs, and even, you know, some commodities like gold, oil, natural gas, those kind of things for additional diversification. We'll still dabble in stocks. I mean, we did a trade in Roku the other day, and we'll still do some some small positions, but the bread and butter, the meat of our trades are going to be done in ETFs. So hopefully that is helpful. What's going on in the markets today? Big, big move higher. In fact, this morning when I was looking at the futures, uh, they were halted due to limit up. So S&P moved up 5%. And so uh, that's considered limit up in the futures. And so they were they stopped trading pre-market. Right now, the S&P is up over 8%. Uh, Dow's up over 9 NASDAQ's up over 7%. Russell's up about 8% as well. Oil was up about 5 6 7% at one point today. Uh, now it's up about 2%. So it's giving up a little of those gains. Gold's up 6%. Bonds are down a little bit under a percent. So... Some big moves in the market in anticipation of this potential stimulus plan that uh, that Congress is getting ready to put on Trump Daddy's desk. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Now, as you remember over the last few weeks, anytime the government has come out with some type of major financial stimulus, whether it's cutting rates or quantitative easing or pumping money into the system, the market has reacted negatively. Right, it's gone down, and so. The question is, this is the market's moving higher in anticipation of this new bill, but the question is, when it comes out, is it going to get the market's approval, or is the market going to look at it as that's not good enough and, and turn around and hit new lows? So that that's kind of the main question. One thing we did in preparation of this, because we are finally getting a little bounce, is we added a little bit more short delta, and we did that in the form of one of our portfolio bunker strategies, just like we teach in our course, uh, where it gives us some some downside uh, protection which with very little upside risk. So if this thing continues to rocket higher, then we have very little risk. But if it does turn around, we've got some big upside potential to the downside. And so we just nibbled. We just added a little bit here. We're not going to go crazy because obviously nobody knows what's going to happen. And now if we get a little bit of a move higher, we'll add a little bit of more shorts and we'll 
goes higher, we'll add a little bit more shorts. And so continuing to keep our portfolio balanced in a way that we're comfortable with. You know, usually we like to keep a little bit of short delta, a little bit of short bias, but after this massive move and the way that our positions are structured, we've actually accumulated some long delta. So we're a little bit long here, which is which is fine. I mean, after a move like that, you would expect that we see a bounce at some point. You know, we may even see just a massive kind of rip your face off rally, making it look like we are headed back up. But I don't think we've seen the the lowest of the lows yet. So we are continuing to add a little bit of short delta into our portfolio as the market goes up. The other thing I wanted to point out is our friend volatility. So you would think with the markets up huge that volatility would just be getting absolutely annihilated. And you'll see when the markets opened up, volatility was down quite a bit more, but has rallied basically all day back to where it is. Now it's still, VIX futures are still down 6%. If we look at VXX, VXX, you can see it was down a lot more too, and it's, it's rallied. Now we did have a short call vertical in VXX after it had this huge spike up. In fact, we got in about right here. Did take a little bit of heat, but then this thing just rolled over. And so we closed that out for a nice winner today in VXX. So let's take a look at some of these other stocks just to see what's going on. Boeing up big today, up over 15%. Although after the slide they've had, that looks pretty minimal when you look at it in uh, relative to the move it's had. But a lot of big movers today to the upside. A lot of green on the screen. Just trying to point out, you know, a lot of these travel companies, Expedia, a lot of these, you know, booking, having having big gains to the upside, booking up, you know, almost 10%. So a lot of these travel companies thinking that this stimulus could be a good thing. Uh, Harley Davidson, hogs going wild, up 23% today. You know, so let's take a look if there's anything else I missed I want to touch on. But yeah, I mean, a lot of things up double digits here. So big move in the market, but we should know something about this stimulus package. At the time of this recording, we've got about 30 minutes left until market closes. I thought actually we'd, we'd know something by now, but maybe by end of day or maybe tomorrow morning, there will be some news about this stimulus package. So we will see what happens, my friends. Stay small, stay mechanical. Don't get too crazy out there. Stay safe. See you tomorrow.